Well, happy uh, Fire John Core Day, everybody. This is the Three Drunken Celts. We've uh, come online here today to uh, do a little online whiskey tasting, individual bottles in individual cities throughout the, uh, well, the Western Hemisphere at the very least. Um, we're doing this in honor of Friar John Cor, who back in uh, 1494 managed to get the honor of being the earliest recorded individual set down on paper in the Exchequer Rolls of Henry VII as being the first person to make whiskey, or not actually whiskey, aqua vitae at the time. Um, anyway, uh, our concept tonight is we're just going to go through our individual bottles. We have our three drunken Celts tasting notes in our own typical fashion. We have our own little notes here. You can get those uh, if you want to have a look at them for yourself, something closer. Feel free to go to www.3drunkenkelts.com. That's the number 3drunkenkelts.com. There in the download section, you can have a look at what we were using to do our tasting notes. We do a, a tasting structure um, quite a bit different from what is uh, industry standard out in the world. All right, so I'm going to kick this thing off with my whiskey tonight. My whiskey tonight is... Uh, of the A.D. Rattray bottling of the, oh boy, I was going to practice uh, how to pronounce this thing, Craig and Latchy Distillery, nine, age nine years. It's a Speyside, sherry finished. Uh, let's see, these are uh, individual cask. It's uh, distilled on the 8th, or sorry, on the 20th of October, uh, 2002, bottled on, uh, well, in 2011. All right. So here we go. Good sound. You'll notice I'm using a, um, not using a typical whiskey glass tonight. I've pulled out the nice glasses. I've got my uh, sherry snifter, which works quite fine for whiskey. All right. Now, just for the record, I've done this ahead of time, so I'm going to be reading off of my notes, but I thought I should have a dram. The flavor, it starts soft and smoky with uh, crisp oak notes getting in there a little bit. Uh, there's uh, caramel and butterscotch in the nose and a little bit of sweet iodine. Um, let's see, the finish of the flavor actually goes into a uh, uh, buttery and a little bit of iodine. It's a little unpleasant on the very end of the nose. Uh, we have a, a scale where we go over the viscosity, the boldness, length of the story, and the personal taste of each of, each of these. Um, I'm sorry, viscosity, boldness, length of story, and then we give a personal taste grading to each of these. For the viscosity, this is actually a pretty thin whiskey. For a nine-year-old, uh, they tend to have a little bit better legs. I gave it a two out of scale of five. The boldness and length of the story, I also gave it a two. It's actually, especially for a space side, a little simple. Uh, I expect a little bit more out of my space size, and I expect a little bit of... Uh, um, a little bit more fruit on the finish than I'm getting on this one. Uh, the, um, the boldness, it's a nice, easy drinking whiskey. So we're giving twos pretty much across the board. Now, for personal taste, I'll actually go with a B on this. It's a pleasant drink. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, glad to have it. Um, I'll probably buy another bottle, actually. Let's see. This is a little bit about the distillery, just really quickly. I just happened to look it up. It uh, turns out it's uh, owned by Dewar's. This is actually one of the casks that would normally go into Dewar's blends and Dewar's single malts. Yeah, I'm just going to drink a little bit more. All right. <coughs> Next going on here, we're going to move this over. What part of the funny don't you understand? All of the funny I don't understand. <laughs> the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to move this on up to Portland to uh, Jason O'Donnell, who's uh, uh, going to review his bottle, and I'm going to turn my mic off. Absolutely. Thanks, Raz. And I'm interested in the, the AD, AD Rattery. Uh, the fact that you're getting iodine off of the space side is really interesting to me. Really uh, interesting. Let me turn that back on. Yeah, that's something I I've, I've don't really run into too often. It actually drinks a lot like a Highland. Huh. Ah, yeah, a little more smoke than you usually get, too. Which actually surprises me that you set that as a, a B in personal taste because you're much more of a space side guy. I'm just happy to be drinking on Farquhar Day, I think. I'm probably judging nicer than I ought to. <laughs> 
amen to that. Well, what I'm going to do today is I'm taking over well, and... Hold on one second, one second. I think we should have questions, no? Like, where did you get this bottling? I just... I did. You know what? You're gonna, he's got a good point. We, we should have questions at the end of this. I picked this bottle up. I just hit you with a question. I know, and I'm, I'm, I'm answering one more. All right. <laughs> You're the trailblazer, I, I mean, it's like, <laughs> I picked this up at the liquor store down the street. Now back to Seamus. <laughs> and thusly, he wears the color of shame. That's excellent. And that liquor store down the street, of course, is High Time Wine at HighTimeWine.net. Actually, in this this particular case, no. They just opened up a new. Uh, uh, it's it's another one of the, the chains. It's not Bevmo. It's the other one. It's Wine and More or something like that. What's the high? Uh, it's uh, something Wine. I don't remember. It's, it, they had a grand opening. I went in. The bottle looked good. I bought it. I won't go back because I have because I have High Time Wine down down. You know, just as close to go to a High Time Wine, and I'd rather go there. All right. And is there a limited amount of this bottling? Yes, there is, as a matter of fact. This is actually one of 588 bottles. I'm sorry, I should have mentioned that. And that's 588 of these wee tiny bottles. The wee tiny bottles, are those 500s? <laughs> no, it's a, it's a 375 mil. It's a 375, all right. That's a normal size wee bottle, isn't it? It's it a is half a bottle. Yep. Right. Okay. Is that the end of question time with Raz? Actually, no. I have one more question, Raz. How much did that okay. run you? Uh, that ran me. What was it? Thirty, right around thirty-eight bucks for the half bottle. So, all right. Not bad for what it is. Being you know that limited, being from one cask at one distillery, uh, it was worth it. Yeah, half bottle price. You double that up, you're getting into the the seventy dollar range. That's uh, yeah. perfectly appropriate for a nice scotch. Yeah, just just beyond munitions grade. Outstanding. It smells good, though. <laughs> Are you? All right. Well, I'm moving. Representing of the kings, there, buddy. I'm muted. All right. Well, then I'm taking over from Fergus. What I've got here today is a bottle of Angel's Envy. This is a uh, an American bourbon, so we're coming across the pond for this one uh, from the cellars of Lincoln Henderson. Wow, I can't believe I blanked on his name. Lincoln Henderson being uh, one of the guys from Woodford Reserve. Uh, also worked at uh, Jim Beam or Jack Daniels, I believe. Uh, his son actually got him out of retirement for, uh, for this bottling. It is bottle number 2,240, hand-signed, Raz. Uh, so you all appreciate that one. Uh, very limited edition bottling. It is bottled at 43.3%. I'm sorry, 43%. Yeah, 43.3%, which is 86.6 proof. Uh, like Raz, I did uh, take notes beforehand, so this is going off of uh, what I'm reading. But, uh, you know, it is well worth the dram right now as well. Mm. Which is odd because uh, not a scotch. I've actually started to get into bourbons a lot more. Really strange part of this, on paper, this dram is an amalgamation of everything I dislike in bourbons and scotches. It's aged in new oak barrels with a three to four alligator char, which is typically way too much for me. Uh, it's got a 72% corn mash bill with only a meager 18% rye content. Uh, and to be perfectly fair, it does come from a rather big name in the industry. Uh, typically, I, I go for a lot of the, the smaller uh, boutique-type distilleries. Uh, like I said, I'm not a fan of heavy char. I definitely prefer a, a light two in the barrels, uh, and, and I do tend to gravitate to high rye content in my bourbons. Uh, and like I said, I, I do love the passion of the boutique distillers who've not yet been broken by the industry. Uh, there is some madness in what Lincoln Henderson's uh, combination of the mash bill, the heavy char, uh, doing four to six years aging, and then uh, finishing another three to six months in ruby port barrels from Portugal. 
uh, really goes to show that uh, you can't judge a dram by its recipe because this one really struck me as uh, inspired insanity, uh, almost the bourbon equivalent of what uh, Jim McEwen of Bruglotti is doing. So on the nose, to get right into our, uh, our tasting notes here, you really get a heavy port and caramel right at the beginning. Uh, some cinnamon and vanilla move in after that. And then we get a slight hint of turpentine, which moves into a, a very, very mild oak right at the end. Oh, lovely nose on this dram. The flavor, it's actually a tad hot, which is surprisingly bitey for just an 86 proof here. Uh, it starts with a nice balance of oak and spice with a, a rather distinct note of the, the corn mash right in the middle. Then it eases into, uh, rather quickly, into the sweetness of the port finish and vanilla from the oak. And then, of course, some of that smoke from the char starts to come through towards the end here. On the finish, I get a really kind of medium length finish to this. The heat keeps it uh, rather reined in, though. Uh, not really short because it's not as hot as, a, a, say, a 90 proof, but not as long as if uh, maybe this were were bottled in at uh, a 40 percent or an 80 proof. Uh, the char definitely comes through here during the finish, and of course uh, leaves you with that residual oakiness that uh, that you get on the nose as well. Uh, the base distillate and, and port notes, of course, having vanished completely by the end here. Uh, just because of the heat, I, I believe that that really pushes those notes uh, right out rather quickly. Uh, in terms of vis viscosity, uh, it is an American bourbon, so generally they're a little more viscous than some of the, uh, the scotches and irishes out there. Uh, this one I gave a, a solid three in viscosity. Uh, moved on to uh, boldness. Uh, it really struck me as kind of a, a three or four, so I, I slotted it right in the middle at a 3.5. Uh, it really is a rather big dram. Length of story, I pushed down to a, a two, two and a half. Uh, really not that long, but uh, not as short as some of the hotter scotches I've tasted. And uh, slotted it in at a, a solid B plus in personal taste. I really come to enjoy this dram. And... Uh, there you go. Those are my notes on Angel's Envy from Lincoln Henderson. Very nice. Now, is this a distillery that uh, you know the people work in it now? Or, I mean, it seems like you know everybody up there these days. Well, you know, oddly enough, this is not one of uh, our local distilleries up here in Portland. Uh, Lincoln is actually based out of Kentucky, I believe. Uh, in this particular okay. bottling, uh, he's pulling distillate from a contract distillery. Uh, I'm not sure which one off the top of my head, uh, but they are working on uh, building out their own distillery uh, to, to pull out product later on. So uh, I do expect uh, some good things to come out of, uh, out of Lincoln's Angels Envy brand uh, in, the, in the next few years here. Excuse me, sir. Did you say alligator char? I did say alligator char. Can you please define alligator char for those of us who do not know what alligator char is? Absolutely. An alligator char is is that, uh, essentially, it's uh, considered a number four char in terms of the barreling. The The term alligator char really comes from the, the look and the feel of the char inside the barrel. Uh, when you get to that heavy char level, it does tend to look like an alligator scales on the inside of the barrel. Uh -oh. And hence the term alligator char. And and a four is, I mean, what four is, is the four is the heaviest. Uh, the range is one to four, one being a, a light toast, uh, two and three, of course, being those those middle variables, uh, a, a medium toast to a medium heavy toast, and then of course uh, the alligator char being burnt. And have you ever been able to? have uh, similar whiskeys that have different chars side by side to know the difference? Not side by side. Uh, however, just recently I did have the pleasure or uh, displeasure, depending on your, uh, your take, of 
having Ardbeg's Alligator, uh, which is, of course, one of the, the scotches that is uh, primarily aged in that heavy uh, number four alligator char barreling. And there is absolutely a difference. You can definitely taste the char coming through. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Well, very nice. Never, very well done, too, by the way. Never forgetting um, the funny. <laughs> That's why they're here. God bless them. Absolutely. Are right, we ready to move this on for Kevin now? Kevin who? Kevin? Yes, precisely. Kevin, Kevin who? On. Ah, you're here. There we go. Woo! That's a deal. So. I'm muted. Yeah, but for how long? That's always the question. Not very. I am a button away. Uh, yeah, I've noticed that about you. you, know, you a button away from what is the question? You do realize I I control this whole hangout, so I can mute your butts in a second. Of course you can. <laughs> Take it away, Kev. Okay, fair enough. In any event, um, my uh, my dram for the evening is one that I've mm, frankly never even come close to before. It's uh, from Aberlour. It's the Abuna. Um, those of you who uh, speak to the expression on Jason's face is kind of amusing, I've got to admit. But uh, in any event, uh, it's it, it looked amusing in the case, uh, considering that I couldn't see the bottle and figured, eh, what the hell, let's go. Anyway, uh, so here we go. I think I like the sound of mine better than yours, Ralph. I don't know, that, that squeal sounds good. In any event. Yeah, you win. <laughs> not a very much, but sometimes. Yeah, I know that dram too, by the way. I, I'm sure Enjoy. you do. I'm sure you do. So, just right offhand, looking at color, um, it's a little lighter than I was thinking. Um, for some reason, I had expected something that was going to be a little darker in color, but you know, that's neither here nor there. Um, just looking at, at at the way it's coming off the glass, you know, in terms of, sort of legs, um, not something that I would have expected um, it to be particularly thick given that it's a cast strength. Everything that I've seen before at cast strength always seems to be very, come across as thin even if it's not. Um, is that the higher alcohol? Don't know. You know. In any event, let's notice it. Okay. Um, the the first hit on the nose for me is is almost turpentine, which is kind of funky. Um, I I get a little bit of raisin and call it um, kind of burnt caramel. And by the way, I'm not going off of previously done tasting notes. So well done, sir. Um, First thing I'm getting off of it is is a lot of heat, um, which I guess again not terribly surprising. Uh, cast strength for this beast is uh, 120 proof, 60% alcohol, or, or I think they list on on their website 59.98. But um, Along the sides of the mouth, more raisin, more caramel. Kind of a weird candy. Uh, it's the only way to describe it. Um, if you've ever, I don't want to say the mouth of cotton candy, but that's that's kind of what it strikes me as. Uh, Welcome to the Spay Valley. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, but. That's kind of interesting because the, the cotton candy feel stays even as the heat burns off, uh, and that's kind of nice. Um, given that they, they, they seem to call these all sherry bombs, I'm kind of surprised by how little of the sherry hit there is on that. Now, that could be because my nose and my palate are screwed up tonight, or it could just be the way it is. But after that, that first blast of heat, um, as it burns off, I'm, I'm kind of liking that. Um, I'm guessing yeah. you're not getting the cherry bomb because of the cask strength. That could very well be. That could very Have well you be. Added water? No, not yet. That's my next step. But I wanted to go through the, this piece first. So, okay. Um, 
given that I am I am the, the newbie to 3DC in terms of talking and tasting notes, um, to me this is in terms of viscosity and my own personal take, I guess you could say, I probably put this in a, at like a two. It does not strike me as something that's very thick in the mouth or in a glass. Um, in terms of boldness, wow. Um, depends on your own personal definition of bold. To me, the fa again, the cast strength, you know, seriously messes with 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 what you might think of as bold because you get that that massive heat right at the beginning. Um, but once you get past that, and actually on on second nosing, um, it's kind of I, almost delicate. Aside from that, if you if you can get past the past the heat, um, the length of it, there's still finish going on. That cotton candy seems to be kind of mellowing out, and I'm getting some. Um, I don't want to call it cedar, but it's kind of plank, not quite oak. A little bit of wood off the back. Um, that's kind of cool. Okay. Um, so length of story, probably you know above medium to me. Um, you know it's not disappearing immediately, which is nice. Um, so boldness, I'd, I'd probably peg it in the middle, and length of story, um, one notch above the middle. So like a three and a four respectively. Personal taste, um, I'd try it again. I mean, hell, I've got a bottle of it. I'll be drinking more of it. Uh, funny thing, that, eh? Um, but uh, this isn't my usual dram. Um, you know, I, I, I tend to go on the... I seem to get hit uh, as being a little on the eclectic side. But this, this would not be a go-to. So, okay, that's without water. Let's see what happens when, conveniently, I have water. Raz, would you like to explain the water concept while he's doing that? Thank you. The water concept. Water concept, you add water to a whiskey, and it'll, it'll bloom the flavors, and uh, it'll change them dramatically. It'll also bloom the nose a bit. Um, it's one of a couple different ways I know to bloom a whiskey. It's uh, um, the downside to blooming with water, as, as I've heard it argued, is that uh, if it's a regular, not cast strength wow. scotch, adding a drop of uh, water to it is going to uh, uh, take it out of the realm of whiskey and put it into something else because it doesn't doesn't hit the 80 proof minimum. But uh, that being said, There's, it's quite effective and if it works for you, use it. Yeah, and I don't, I don't think we're in any danger whatsoever of, of a couple of drops of water taking this below 80 proof somehow. No. Uh, uh, I'd have to pretty much dilute it by half to get to that. So. Okay, so speaking of, of what it's done on the nose, um, you know the, the the classic phrase it opened up the nose. I don't get the 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 heat for one of a better term on the nose has completely gone away, and that that kind of of sugared wood, sugar cane. Um, when you burn sugar cane, that's the the feeling I'm getting, I guess. So, but a kind of molasses. Not no, not to me. Molasses has a has an almost sourness to its sweet. This is this is this is hitting me like like the taste of burned burnt wooden burned burned outer piece of sugar cane. I guess is the only way to describe it. Um, so you know a little bit of the caramelization, um, but. Okay, and almost a citrus nose. I mean, um, kind of, kind of like um, I don't want to call it Meyer lemon, but milder than milder than lemon or orange, but still that same sort of citrusy thing. Kevin, did you uh, did you say how much you you just cut that with? Uh, I cut I cut this with I cut this with basically a finger dipped into water, two drops. Okay, so not much at all. Not much at all. No, no, I I. I, I didn't want to nail it down that much this first time, so it'd be interesting to try cutting it with with noticeably more water. Or, um, God help you, I wonder what this would be with with soda water, but that might be a blasphemy. So, you know. Okay, so Let's make sure we're all muted if we're not talking. <laughs> um, 
instead of that first blast of heat that I got with it with it uncut, the heat starts to build. So the first mouth is a lot more. Now I'm I'm getting sherry, um, and then then the burn, and the burn's actually not stopping the sherry from coming through. Which on on some things I've tasted, once the burn starts like that, it's it's toast for a little while. But that's that's interesting. Something else to note on that particular dram is it's non-chill filtered, so mm -hmm. it, it could be a little cloudier, especially if you add a drop of water to it. Yeah. Are you seeing that effect on it at all? Actually, I'm not sure whether that's cloudy or that's flex from my finger, so we'll leave it at maybe. Um, it doesn't. It didn't. It didn't completely gray out or anything like that. It didn't go classically milky. So I, I would say that that didn't make any difference. But, but yeah, that was one of the things I noted. By the way, um, I didn't really cut much in the way of description. My understanding is uh, the uh, the apunat is is um, essentially um, after it's been distilled, it's it's parked in multiple casks. Every batch they do it by batch rather than by year. Um, I tried finding information about batch number forty, which this is and could not find anything that would, even on the, the Aberlour site, as far as uh, how many different casks and what the mix of ages the casks was. So anybody's guess there, but it is aged in Oloroso sherry casks, which was one of the things that uh, generated the appeal to me because I've, I've had some really interesting experiences lately with, you, you mentioned McEwen, uh, the, uh, all the, the Brochlade products and... Um, a, a recent event, I got exposed to a lot of things, including some rums that were aged in, in some interesting things. So um, I'm kind of liking the, the results of what people are doing with that lately. But Fer Fergus, did, did you have something to say about uh, Jim's rum, rum stuff? I know you uh, sat in a, one of his, his sessions. Was that, were, were, did, you, did you try any of the Renegades? No, I did not. Okay. Um, the the renegade that's obviously kind of out of context for this venue, but the renegade rums, pretty amazing stuff. I gotta say the three that the three that I tried, um, and each of them aged in a, a a different set of casks. One in Chateau Latour cask, which was kind of a twist, um, and that was the one I thought was the most interesting at the time. But you know that was over a month ago now. But anyway. Um, Aging in, in in the casts of of substances other than what it's uh, you know what it's eventually going to be made of seems to me to be kind of cool. Um, and do you so, know how typically long they do that? Um, what I gathered was for the batches on on up enough that it runs anywhere between five and twenty five years for for any any given cask, but they blend from different casks, so you could have. You know the the percentage that came from a five year cast uh, five year cask versus a twenty five, and how many times they're reusing the same cask, um, and whether or not they've done any any sort of charring to the cask in between or any other modifications, I've got no information on. And uh, Olorosa uh, sherry, where is that from? Well, Oloroso. let's see. Oloroso. Um, I would hazard a guess that if it's a sherry, it's probably Spanish. Seems yeah. like By the way, Avalor is doing something a little differently here. They're using uh, uh, for the entire aging sherry as opposed to a sherry finished whiskey. Right. Where, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I can actually answer to that. That's usually three to six months is all they put. And then all they're doing there is they're changing out the butts to a sherry butt to get the finish. Yeah. Um, but with so the Avalor is really going a step further. So, so with the Abuna, it is actually aged in the sherry cask the entire time. Okay. Yeah. Then I, I'm I'm almost surprised that there's not more sherry sherry hit in the in the mouth, but okay. In any event, um, I'm I'm babbling on and and there I'm not getting anything else out of it other than one thing that I'm noticing from from opening up with a little bit of water is the finish is about the same that same kind of cotton candy drop down, but it's lasting a lot longer, um, which to me is a little unexpected. So, um, cool. In my in my experience with sherry finishing and and sherry aging, generally you're going to get a lot more of the the sherry cask flavor in the first few months 
which is why you find a lot of uh, the scotches and, and even moving into the bourbons nowadays uh, where you're only finishing it in for, for three to six months because mm -hmm. that's really where the sherry comes through. After that, it moves past the sherry and you're starting to just pull in more of the oak again. Mm -hmm. Any more questions for James? 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 Kevin? James, Kevin. Where did I get James from? My apologies. Uh, actually, so Kevin, while you that's were talking... Okay. That's okay, Bob. I don't mind. While you were talking, I was uh, <laughs> looking up in my, my 3DC notebook and I noticed that uh, we had first tasted the Abanov at Whiskies of the World in '09. Yeah. And uh, your viscosity, boldness, length of story, and personal taste were dead on with, with my ratings. <laughs> Rocking on. And, I, guess, and, I guess that means either, oh, dude. <laughs> I think the boys are ready. I think, I the think boys they are. are. I am going to go on mute unless somebody wants to know about this stuff. <laughs> we'll come back to you later on the Lagavulin. and I want to know about that. But um, I'm going on mute too. Raz, send yeah, it to Fergus. I'm just going to move this on over without much further ado, right over to Fergus and James, yeah. I think it is, or is that a stewardess? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very good. Uh, one, one last comment bef before we go. Uh, uh, the... the um, Abalor of the three that we've tasted up to now, that that is probably the most common that you can actually find in stores. Uh, it's going to be in Bevmo. It's going to be at, at the high time. Whereas the others, that you might have to do some searching. We so, got it at Total Wine. Which which I I, pre I actually appreciate that you. That's did where mine that. came from. I appreciate that you did that because kind of it almost defeats the purpose that we get to so small a batch on these things which is what we're going to do too so we've chosen the Nopogue Castle 1993 found in a small store and held at ransom from a small man so in Rhode Island no no, this, no this is the this is this is what I, this is my find of, of the week actually it's probably the find of the year um uh, so I guess I'm going to back up and, 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 and actually give you a little history on the Pogue Castle. Um, the Pogue Castle is a castle in Ireland, uh, County Cork, and it was found, well, rediscovered by an American, um, Mr. A Andrews, and he and his wife are, were art architects, and they fell in love. Architects. And why, why exactly is Raz's face up there, not mine? I'm talking. Anyways, uh, <laughs> they're not even hearing us, I think. No, um, I, I can see your face, and you're looking good. Do we actually pop up? Yes. Interesting. Yeah, you're fine. You don't, don't need to look at yourself so you don't pop up. No, we pop up for them. But we want to pop up for ourselves, No, too. we can see ourselves. We're small, but okay. mighty. We're small. Private talk for later, boys. <laughs> Anyhow. Um, you, guys are, you guys are sounding very Jay and Silent Bob at this point. Yeah, Andrew's, uh, 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 Andrews, uh, uh, does that mean I shouldn't talk? Or shouldn't I talk? Well, you keep talking. Okay. Um, so uh, he fell in love with the castle. His wife started re renovating the castle, and he started purchasing casks from other distilleries. Um, and uh, has been put. Actually, he's he was doing this for his friends, and 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 because rich people can do that. And uh, then his son comes along a few years later and says, wow, Dad, Dad's pulling some great casts from other distilleries. I want to start selling it. And so what they do is they grab, say, casts from uh, uh, Tillamore or from uh, Cooley and Bushmills, and they go ahead and they mature it um, at home. Um, Andrews, I, I don't know if I mentioned, is an American who went to Ireland and, and has a passion for this stuff. So, the 1993, extremely hard to find, but not impossible. Um, you can find it online. Uh, I actually found it for like 40 bucks online, too. I found three bottles at a liquor store for 40 bucks. I bought all, all three of them. Um, you, you can negotiate with me if you want to buy one off me. Um, so, the whiskey itself, it's probably one of the lightest whiskeys you'll ever see as far as, uh, as the look. Um, it is a very mellow yellow. Uh, it doesn't look like it's been charred much at all. 
Um, no caramel in there. Not a darn thing. Yeah. yeah, Fergus, isn't that typical for Napo castles? Yes, uh, except for the 16. But I tell you, it's light even for Napo castle. He's got four bottles here, and it's yeah, it's the lightest of the bunch. That's the difference you can tell. between the two. Um, the reason being there is that that 16 is matured in a sherry cast, and it's taking all of that color there. He's got a 94 here. Um, it's probably a few shades darker as well. Yeah, we, we actually have four Napogue castles in front of us. We're only rating the, the first one. We're having fun drinking the other ones and taunting our friends. Um, so He's taunting you. I'm not. I'm honoring each and every one of you. By drinking. I wish you so were here. I do. The, the, um, All right, we were there. The nose is very Irish in that it, it does the grass, you know, and, and if you have a good Irish whiskey, it's, it's going to feel grassy. It's going to have that green that, that only Irish can do. Um, the only difference is then it goes tropical for me. Um, I don't know about you, but for me it's pineapples and, and, and maybe like tart apples. Well, the nose, I get, like, whipped cream, like that vanilla whipped cream, like, you know, right when they deliver your dessert, yeah. you know, they you plop it in front of you, and you kind of, like, it's almost a shame to take a bite because it looks so good and it smells good, too. And it's great that we're finishing with us because this is what I would call a dessert whiskey. It's, it, yeah. it is fruity, and being in San Francisco, that's appropriate, too. What are you saying? You're fruity. I'm not fruity. Look at you. Hey, Fergus, where does the green flavors come from? The malted <laughs> barley. Unmalted barley. Unmalted. <laughs> Bullshit. Well, someone, someone, Wait a minute. Someone has to know this stuff. I don't. I, it, you know. Raz, Raz knows. Well, Raz, well, Raz, well, Raz is, well, he's the voice man of this whole situation. I have lots of notes. Someone needs to know. Don't don't mess my notes. Raz don't need notes. That's don't why I make shit up. I'll tell you where it comes from. Okay. There are. Uh, it's, we're talking Ireland, you know. Pinky out, James. Leprechauns. Leprechauns. Lots of leprechauns. <laughs> lots of leprechauns. Anyhow, uh, this. Am, am I peeking out? Is it too much? Should I speak softer? Pinky's out. Pinky's out. out. Oh. Um. I got a little. AV nerd on you, didn't This I? one, this in particular cast was uh, taken from Bushmills Distillery. Um, it was uh, distilled in 1993 and bottled in 2001. You do the math on that to see how old it is. Um, again, it, so it has that, you know, green smell, and, and it, it, the flavor itself is, comes off very spicy. And we just had Indian food, which was delicious. And not necessarily the best idea before this. It, like, no. A sip after that curry was, like, painful. I sort of disagree, because it's a very spicy whiskey already. And when you have that curry, if you like the spice, it, it comes out in, in a thousandfold. And it so does. that's the good if you like spice. Now, uh, my friend James brought out some... Milk and that helped out a little bit. Calmed there. everything down. Calmed down. So, um, it, in the realm of viscosity, I gave it a one. What yeah, did you? I, I, I would go one or two. It's really, really light. And really. Again, smooth. in the tradition of Nippo Castle, all their whiskeys seem to go that way. Um, this That's, is also a single malt Irish whiskey. Um, most Irish whiskeys end up being blended whiskeys. Mm. Um, this is not. Do you think this? I didn't. That, this isn't the boldest whiskey. I, I gave it a pretty low score on the boldness. See, I think I I I've I skewed my boldness rating because of the uh, the, the Indian food. No. Um, because the Indian food was really bold, but now after I've let my palate kind of calm down, he's he's probably right. Cause yeah, I, it's really mellow. It's so I have nice. no idea what I said. I it said so nice. I gave it a three for boldness. So pretty kind of. I went with the two. I went with the two. Um, uh, as far as length of story, again, I'm skewed because of the Indian food. I went with a four. I did too. Um, I think it lasts a long time, and and it it mellows to a sweetness. That that I've I've always loved in in this uh, whiskey. Um, it's and, I, and it and went smoky for me. This is the advantage of having two people. Now we can get in a fist fight. 
No, it's very it's very smoky at the end. Like way way deep at the end of the story, you set it down for a moment, and suddenly it's like smoke. No. See, it's coming out of his ears. Not a chance. No, I really no, I no. I disagree. I disagree. Smoke. I with you. I'm. You're wrong. Smoke. No. Um, are you a smoker? Because that might be why. No. Um, I'm still trying to find out that whole thing that he said because it's wrong. Um, <laughs> anyhow, he's still trying to prove Raz wrong. I am. I am. Uh, I, I will Leprechauns. say the reason I use this whiskey for our first tasting is because it, not this year necessarily, but this distillery, this 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 company is is dear to me. I love it. It is um, the um, whiskey that makes me keep looking for more whiskey. Um, and, and it's nice to go travel around. Go, I suggest you go and you hit every liquor store in the neighborhood because eventually you'll find a really old, nice bottle of it. Um, and then, uh, I guess for personal grading, um, I, again, it's, it's, my, it's my favorite. I, I give it an A-. minus. Um, and the reason I go E minus is I, I I've had the other ones that are in front of me and I think there there's a shades of better at least this one's amazing um, that would be the 94 Masters Distillers but uh, it's not it's definitely not their best but it's top four yeah what's avoid interesting the 94 what's Excuse that me? what was that but avoid the 94 yeah 94 has ruined me. Um, yeah. Both financially and and taste bud wise. Yeah, this is a little of the ninety four. The ninety four is definitely the girl you want to take home at the party, and ninety three is her friend that you wind up talking to all night, yeah. wishing you could talk to her. So if you're playing the wingman, the ninety three is the wingman's choice. Right. Um. Definitely. But when you add water now, I, just in terms of the way I, it, it, the taste goes for me, it's a very it's a very soft. Uh, in terms of that grassy flavor, it's soft at the beginning. It's very light, um, but when you drop water in there, it blooms. It, it, like it goes from perhaps like a um, a late summer, no, maybe like a like a, a late fall field of grass that's just kind of like losing all of its lushness, and then it just explodes with the green. It gets very bright after so a little time. Two questions: <clears throat> How much water did you cut with it? And what is this bottled at in terms of alcohol by volume or proof? It is a 40 proof, and and yeah. we we right now I'm currently uncut um, because I'm not Jew. And hey, Fer Fergus, could you do me a favor since you're uncut at the moment? Yes. Since uh, James uh, bloomed his with water, could you bloom yours with heat? Oh my God! It takes so long. No, it doesn't. And and the okay. Hey, well, so he's blooming with heat. I didn't. I added the tiniest drop, and it, it went with, a long way. Blooming with heat on with this cup is a hard one. Um, and what uh, stick it between your legs, pal? What what Raz? That'll that'll Raz, still filter it. Yes, <laughs> that's what all the girls say. <laughs> um, anyhow, um, heating it up effectively does the same thing as if you were to add water to it. It, it helps it to bloom. Um, I, I am not a purist like Mr. Uh, uh, Raz because I'm okay with adding water. It's a lot easier. It's not really... I don't care that it's no longer whiskey because I added dew drops. Um, quite frankly, there's enough stuff in these glasses that it probably doesn't turn to whiskey or loses its whiskiness with that. Oh, 40%, yeah. And for the record, I have nothing against blooming with water. It's simply another way, and if it works for you, use it. What, what, what blooming for me does is it really does just kind of brings out even more of the vanilla and, and, and kind of takes away a little bit of the, the fruitiness of it, and, and obviously the alcohol is, is diminished. By the way, when you're blooming with heat, you warm it up, and then don't just stick your nose in it. Actually release, and then stick your nose in it. If Why you, is that? Because you'll get all the alcohol in your nose right away, and then you'll be like... Mm -hmm. just like that. Yeah. You, you mentioned that this was difficult to find, or could be difficult to find, for the yes. average, the 93 and the 94. 
assuming that you were able to find it, you did not mention a price point that you probably find it at right now. <laughs> That's the problem again. So I've seen it in San Francisco at a, at a liquor store for, I believe it was $130. Um, I picked up my three bottles at 40 a piece because he had them at the bottom shelf and didn't know what he had. Keltrudy. I have... I have found it in Maryland, so Kevin, if you're going to Maryland anytime soon, you can pick up for about thirty-five dollars. You're the one that flies around for about thirty-five dollars, I believe. Around they have, um, some 1993. If if it's Tokyo or or London, I'm your man. If it's Maryland, there's no airlines based there, so you won't find me there. Oh right, fine. Well, that's too bad. So it's no no layovers in Maryland. I, I would pretty much identify that as a solid no. Yeah, Maryland, you just kind of drive through. Yes. It's a flyover, um, it's a flyover state. Let's I, not insult everybody in Maryland. What's the big difference uh, between the 93 and the 94? The, the, the 94 master distillers and this 93. Uh, to be honest with you... Uh, About a year. The, yeah, I'm wondering if there's anything more than just the fact, just the year. Well, is it it's, a blend? It, is it a, it's a, they're both it, both it, mills. Um, and they are. Okay, excellent. Yes, they are Bushmills, and uh, the 94 was actually bottled in 2004, so it has an extra uh, two years of in the barrel. Huh. Um, and uh, with the Masters Distiller, actually, um, the Masters Distiller was bottled in 90, or 2009, December specifically, the uh, 94 Masters you can still pick up. They made 1,100 bottles of it, only sold in the U.S. Um, you can definitely find it. It's going to be $100. Um, I By would, the way, real quick, for the record, the 94 I was talking about was not the Distiller Select. They put out right. another 94 at one time that was atrocious. Yes. What? Yeah, there was a 94 that was horrible. No, no, you're both insane. No, there no, was. It was like no, it was like putting no, no. a cup on your tongue and drinking around no, it. Wait, stop, stop! I am not going to allow you to defile the ninety-four like that. No, we're not defiling the distillers yeah. ninety-four. We're defiling the other ninety-four that that we've had that was horrible. I recall this. Okay, gentlemen, you did not sit down for three hours with one shot. It was a different 94, my friend. Sir, I'm telling you, I sat down. There is a vintage 94, and there's a Masters Distillers 94. I know that there's two different. And I am telling you that I sat down with a dram of both with Sir Justin, my distilling buddy, and we spent the entire four hours passing both glasses back and forth Measuring the different tastes and how it felt. And by the end, they couldn't tell the difference. Perhaps it was the 95, Raz. It was the 95, gentlemen. Absolutely. That is not a good whiskey. <laughs> you know, you're hot when you're wearing a wig and getting angry. Yeah. As I recall it, by the way, it was the 95 that you shared with Justin, and the 94 was the one that I had. Um, were you at Southern? No, you weren't. Oh, ask Raz if he was drunk, because if he was, then he remembers. If he wasn't, that's the kicker. I'm saying he wasn't at Southern Crusade. I was at Southern Crusade, and that's where we did it. Because I'll cop to that one. Because Sir Justin gets really great bottles of whiskey on his birthday, and that's the weekend of his birthday. Um, the 94 <laughs> vintage, in my opinion, is the twin sister with... With bigger, faker boobs. Not faker. These are real. No, I'm saying these are real. Oh, these are real. The sister got fake Oh, boobs. I see. The stick was nagging. Um, and then they actually... Oh, you want us to cut now? Are we done? <laughs> I, I think Raz just gave you the hook. So, anyhow. Uh, yes, so there you have it. The, the 1993 Pogue Castle. Um, if you can get it, it's amazing. Excellent. And I, I think we are coming up on the hour, or at least the 45-minute mark. I can't wait to watch this all over again. Oh, tell me about it. Now, when it comes up, are we going to have all five of us, or four of us, in? they'll be able to see all four of us? 
you'll you'll be looking good. What I want to do is actually go back to Kevin for a moment because I want to hear about the uh, the Lagavulin that you have there. Outstanding. Okay, fair enough. Um, this is a bottle that Jason actually would be familiar with because this is one of the two bottles that I screwed with his head on after um, Giles and Joe got together and we had an after party at, at my house. And I had a bottle of the Ladig, and I had this, which is the Lagavulin Distillers Edition, finished in Pedro Jimenez sherry casks, double matured. It's the 1981, bottled in 2000. I bought the bottle in 2001 in London at the whiskey store. And by the way, that's what it's called, is the whiskey store, for those of you who know San Francisco. Um, that would be the whiskey it, shop. No, no, this is the whiskey store. Uh, in London at Heathrow Airport, uh, and the uh, the gentleman there at the store recommended it. He said, "Oh, if you like Lagavulin, you'll 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 like this." He was right. The challenge is that this bottle has been open. It's been capped, but it's been open for that length of time. And yes, I did not ever finish it because it's been one of those things that the drams come very very rarely. So what'll be interesting to me is I haven't had this in almost a year and a half. So I'm kind of wondering what's continued to happen to it over the course of time. Um, I have a feeling it, it, it won't be as stellar as it was when I when I first had it. So let's find out. Has it been in a deep, dark place? Uh, it has been in the back of a closet, so to speak, or the moral equivalent thereof for a very long time. I don't, I'm not a real fan of sitting things out in the sun. Uh, generally speaking, when you're down to about a third, is, is when you start getting into that oxidation issue area. Mm -hmm, because you got so much air up above. Exactly. Makes sense. Makes sense. It, generally, from my experience, what that does is, it, it, all it does is mellow it out a little more. That wouldn't be surprising. Now, going through the same game with this, um, it's, it's lighter um, than I had become used to with with it over the years. I remember when I was first pouring it, it always seemed very dark. Um, Again, just on the, the look, viscosity, it's, it's not really, it, it, it's not clingy. Okay, nose. Um, the first hit on the nose is, I hate to say it, kind of a chemical funk. Um, kind of fennel, um, you know that that sort of of uh, walking into an old style hospital smell, um, but then the peat. I think that's peat. I hope that's peat. Okay. Salt. Um, yeah, it's mellowed. It's mellowed out from my memory of it. Um, that would make a certain amount of sense. I get the salt, um, kind of beef jerky. I mean, salt and and something, um, the taste that they call umami, the richness thing, kind of combining together. Um, And almost butterscotchy, and then the funny thing is the finish just dies. It's like it, it, it vanishes in the back of the mouth very, very quickly, as things stand right now. So length of story, you're putting that at a... I put, it, I put length of story at a one or a two. Wow. I mean, um, it's, it, it, it may be this bottle, like I said. It has been, you know, it's been around and, and open for quite some time. I think we were at the halfway mark, you know, five, six years ago. So I, I figured it would be interesting, if nothing else. Um, what's interesting, though, is right before it dies, I think that final, that final piece I'm getting is what I associate with sherry towards the end of a mouthful of sherry. Um, so kind of the sherry hit, but not up front. Um, 
and the the fennel the fennel nose doesn't go away on on second nose. I'm going to dribble a couple of drops of water in. Now, I, I was told by some really amazingly famous guy from Brooklotti that the older the whiskey, the further down the tongue and throat uh, the burn is. So mm -hmm. a young whiskey will burn up front, mm -hmm. and then a really old one will burn down the throat. Uh, do you I'm, find that? I'm, I'm the, the place that the burn hit on this one is like right at the, the sides of the base of the tongue, so not back in the throat, but still on the tongue. Not on the front, not on the mid-tongue, but, but down low. Um, not much burn along the top and the back, which is what I usually get from, from Lagavulin 16. Um, and that, that phenol, f with, with a couple drops of water in it, that phenol funk's died down a little bit, but it's still there. It's, um, I'm calling it a funk because it's not pleasant, uh, but it's not on the taste, it's only on the nose. Now, are you saying phenol or phenol? Um, so same, word, same word pronounced differently. Phenol as in the polycyclic um, carbon compound. No, no. Phenol as in the vegetable or phenol as in the polycyclic compound. Uh, well, it depends on whether you're British or not. You'll pronounce it phenol anyway. Um, no, I'm talking about the, the, the anti... Um, the antibacterial um, chemical that is used that is based on it, it's it's basically like hydroxybenzene um, and there are other byproducts as well. Sorry, chemistry geek. No, that's um, fine. I there are a few whiskeys where I actually get fennel. Oh, or fennel, fennel as in the the bulb and the spice. Okay, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, thank you, Jason. Because I, I the whole time I thought you meant fennel. I was like, that's curious. Okay, fair enough. Uh, my apologies. I will try and be more phenolic about my phenol. Yeah. In, in any event, um, with the... Watch your homonyms. Yeah. Always watch your... Never forget the homonyms. Uh, I've always preferred to be heteronymic myself. I love all this whiskey okay. that's going on. Okay, the... Um, With it with it open, I'm getting more caramel in the same place where I got the burn with it un uncut. I'm getting less burn on the second pass uh, with water in it, and uh, the sherry the sherry really comes out along the back. Um, nothing up front, um, and actually that's another thing. It's like it, it doesn't have a lot of, on the front. It's it's all in the mid and back, which is kind of weird. Interesting. Now. I, I, I want to state this for anyone viewing you three people, if you ever do view. Um, I, I would think that this is not a whiskey you would want to start with. No, absolutely not. But not only not only is it probably more challenging, but I'm guessing the price point probably not in the starter range either. Um, the price point when I bought it back in, in 2001 was 90 bucks. Um, I, I did a, a quick search on the net. If you can find a bottle of it, you're talking between 225 and 250. So well, yeah. what I'd expect for inflation. Yeah, so it, it's, it's, it's not common. Now, Lagavulin is still turning out the distiller's editions. The one thing that's going to be noticeably different is um, the, the guy who was the master distiller at Lagavulin during that, that period um, Don Renwick, um, he's moved on, um, and they've had, I guess, like one or two more since him. So, if you're if you're looking for something built the way he built it, I did a quick look up. I guess he's at uh, uh, Royal Lagnagar. Lagnagar, yeah. So, which I've never had. Have you? Yeah. Oh, yes, you have. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Correction. I am not aware of having had it. We've had it at almost every 3DC tasting uh, thus far, I think. You mean at, uh, at GWW's? Yep. You know, I may have skipped it. Okay, fair enough. My bad. 
Fair enough. Raz, okay. Raz, take us home. Wait, one last thing, sorry. Can we all make sure that we post, if we can find online a way for someone to pick up the whiskey that they introduced, they post it online uh, with this link, with the, the video, so that people may be able to chase it down. Absolutely, and in fact, when I uh, end this broadcast, it will be posted on YouTube, so go ahead and uh, check out our YouTube link at youtube.com slash three drunken Celts, and uh, we'll be posting the links to where you can obtain these particular bottles in the comment section. Cool. Woohoo! Take us out, Raz! Raz? Raz, Raz you're on mute. Raz. You're on mute. You're on mute. Oh, Raz. Oh, Raz. Raz, you're muted. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Here's what I'll tell you. <laughs> Let, let's <laughs> toast to Friar John Core. Yeah, I cannot be heard. I am just sitting here. Drinking. I love you guys. I love you all. Thank you so much for being here. We're going to toast to Friar John Core and yeah. say it's been a great tasting, great hanging out with all of y'all. And uh, we'll see you online. Cheers. Sláinte